so in the last lecture we we had an introduction to sparse table and we saw how sparse table works if you have not seen that video i'd recommend you watching that one first so from last lecture we know that if we have to answer some queries like f of l and r so the idea using idea for using sparse table is this range length of r minus l plus 1 we are going to divide it into powers of 2 and our table would store the value of f over the ranges that are lengths and that are powers of 2 right so what will be uh, how how will your sparse table look so basically the table will be a 2d array or 2d vector and in that table the element at i row and j column it will store the value of f starting from range index i to i plus 2 power j minus 1 right if you look at this range this is exactly 2 power j the length of this range is exactly 2 power j so and this is really important that the i j index will store the range from i to i plus 2 power j minus 1 now how to calculate this table ij if you see this 2 power j length can be subsequently divided into two lengths of 2 power j minus 1 and another 2 power j minus 1 right so what we can do is to build up this table uh, this table ij we can use the value from the range starting from i to i plus 2 power j minus 1 minus 1 we can use the value that are in this range and to continue in continuation of this the next index will start from i plus 2 power j minus 1 and will end at j and will end at i plus sorry and this will end at i plus 2 power j minus 1 so if you look at this now this is another length another range of length 2 power j minus 1 and this is a length this is a range of length 2 power j minus 1 so what we did was we basically converted this 2 power j range length range to two ranges of both of length 2 power j minus 1 and 2 power j minus 1 and we will be using of we will be evaluating f over this range and this range and then we will be using these two values to calculate table ij right okay so one more thing so okay so what will be the base case now to calculate base case let us say if your j is equals to 0 if your j is equals to 0 that means your table ij will store the value of f start starting from range i to i plus 2 power j here j is equals to 0 so i plus 2 power j minus 1 that means your table ij will store the value of f over i to i right which means your table ij will store the value of only one element f of r i and the <coughs> so what will be the size of uh, sparse table the table was like i and j this i will go from 0 to n minus 1 so our table ha will have one dimension of n and then this j this j will go from 0 to log n 
right because we we totally have one elements right and i so that means i plus 2 power j minus 1 should be less than n and at worst case this can this j can be maximum of log n right so the other dimension of our table will be log n basically we will be using ceiling value of log n to avoid any segmentation fault okay now let's start writing code here i have an array of eight elements uh, let's make two sparse tables one for calculating range sum and another for calculating range max take input n it is size your vector array vector to calc n then for n elements okay. now this value k k is nothing but here the log n that I have uh, taken so Okay, as ceiling of log two of n plus one just for sanity check. Okay, now we need to make two sparse tables. So we need we need two two D vectors. Vector of vector of int. Let's call one as sum table that will store our range sum queries. and call another as max table that will store on max range max queries now we are going to resize them our first dimension was n the other dimension is log n so our first dimension is n then inside each row we need another vector okay, this one you can initialize it with any value uh, I'll initialize them with one. It does not matter with which value you are going to initialize because you are not going to access all the values in the table. Okay, now let's create a function build table. So for our base case if j is equal to 0 my table i0 will have the value of array i right so for int i equals to 0 i plus plus some table i0 will have the value of array i similarly max table i0 will have the value of array i that's because if you have only one element in this range then that element itself is the sum and that element itself is the maximum value in that range right and now we are going to iterate over all the powers of 2 for why because uh, because that's what our ranges will be if our table will be storing in the ranges right so we'll start from j equals to 1 because j is equal to 0 is already done we'll go up to k k is nothing but your log uh, log log n j plus plus for int i equals to 0 i plus 2 power j less than equals to n so why did i write this i plus 2 power j less than equals to n because that's what we want right our i plus uh, i plus 2 power j minus 1 should be less than less than n that means the maximum value it can have is equals to uh, n right because i have added n plus 1 here so that will be less than equals to n so to calculate some table or some table i j value will be we are supposed to use two values here right one was 
so to calculate table ij which was uh, to calculate table ij which was i to i plus 2 power j minus 1 we use this value and this value so if you look at it what is this value this value is nothing but your table i and j minus 1 right because that's is it starts at i goes for the length 2 power j minus 1 and what is this value this value is table it starts at i plus 2 power j minus 1 i plus 2 power j minus 1 and goes goes for length 2 power j minus 1 so this will be j minus 1 so we will be using these two values will be some table i j minus 1 plus some table it will be i plus 2 power j minus 1 uh, this will be j minus 1 similarly for max table for max table you have to calculate maximum between these two values right so the point here is if i have to calculate gcd or lcm i would have used gcd or lcm instead of max similarly same goes for mean max table i j minus 1 max table i plus i plus 2 power j minus 1 which will be Now that we have built our table, let's print this table. So we'll go from for int i equals to 0 to n i plus plus for int j equals to 0 to j is less than equals to k j plus plus. See out. Uh, let's print some table first. There is one single string max table ij. Okay, as you can see, for j equals to zero, you only have the elements uh, in this side, and then for range of length two, you have sum of two elements. That is six plus thirteen equals to nineteen. Thirteen plus five is equals to eighteen. Five plus four equals to nine. Okay, so in the next video we'll we'll see how to answer queries both item important and non item important queries so thumbs up if you like it subs if you love it see you guys in the next one